LeBron James' final stand keeps Cavs atop East and warns of inevitable chain ahead This was a last gasp. This was Joe Lewis fighting Caesar Bryan, Muhammad Ali vs. Leon Spinks. This was Willie Mays with the Mets, the Rolling Stones recording Dirty Work, Orson Welles doing Transformers movies. This was a team with a great legacy just managing to survive. What the Cavaliers did against the Celtics in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals was take an 87-79 win, a critical game in terms of how the world will remember this NBA season not with a stunning upset by a group of mostly hitherto overlooked young Celtics, but with more of the same. Cleveland will play in the NBA Finals, salvaging the year in which so little went right, getting back to the same stage to which they've ascended for, now, four straight years. The Cavs gave themselves one last chance at the NBA's big prize. They did so because of LeBron James' end, with due respect to the 19 points from Jeff Green LeBron James alone. James had 35 points, 15 rebounds, and 9 assists, making 12 of his 24 shots. This followed his 46 points in the Game 6 win, and his 44 in Game 4. He's had a lot of gaudy games, Cleveland coach Tyron Lue said, but I just think, Game 7 in Boston, all the circumstances that surround Boston, the history behind Boston, playing a team that's very well coached, a good, young team that's undefeated in the playoffs at home, to come on the road where all the games have been lopsided, in the hostile environment, Game 7, Eastern Conference Finals, this Game 7 and Game 7 of the NBA Finals in 2016, right there, it was a good night for that kind of nostalgia, James, in the 2016 Finals, was something to behold, he was the same on this night. At the same time, his chat with reporters after the game provided a good reminder of just how strange a season this has been for James, who had called it five different seasons rolled in one, but added on Sunday, it's now six seasons in one. James played all 48 minutes, and as the games of this series ramped up in importance, the team's focus on James has gotten more intense. In the Cavs' last four games, James has been on the floor 91.3% of the time. To state the obvious, he has been needed. It was asked of me to play the whole game, James said. I was just trying to figure out how I was going to get through, in timeouts, catch my breath, at halftime, I didn't come out and warm up, I spent my time trying to recalibrate, catch my wind again, that's what's been asked of me by this ball club, that's just the issue, there was little coming out of the result on Sunday that suggests we'll be seeing Cleveland playing at this level much in the near future, simply because the Cavs will continue to ask that much out of James, even with his effort, it was not a convincing win, this was not a game Cleveland won by the force of its talent, but won the Celtics lost because of fatigue, inexperience, and general ineptitude, the Celtics were 7 for 39 from the three-point line. That's 17.9%. They coughed up an early 12-point lead. They had nine attempts in transition and made just one of them, and they were outscored 16 to 3 in fast break points. Boston went just seven deep and was so sapped by the game's late moments that, after taking a 72 to 71 lead with 6:04 to play in the game, the Celtics failed to make a shot in the next 5:30. Terry Rozier was 2 for 14. Jalen Brown was 5 for 18. Marcus Smart was 1 for 10. When you ride just seven players in a game seven. You're in trouble if three of those seven go eight for 42. It's one of those things that we felt like we had some good momentum going there, and then we had some great looks that just literally went in and out and that we missed. Celtics forward L. Horford said, The Cavaliers, meanwhile, were supposed to have breathed new life into the team back at the trade deadline when they acquired three 25-year-olds Rodney Hood, Jordan Clarkson, and Larry Nance Jr. Those three players combined for two points on one for four shooting in this game, with Hood affixed to the bench for the full 48 minutes. George Hill, the other new Cavalier, was two 2-4-6 with 6 points. This group is not the team of the future. The Cavaliers game 7 starters, on average, are 31 years old. 6th man Kyle Korver is 37. Their opponents starting 5. Meanwhile, had an average age of 25.4 years. This is most certainly the team of the recent past, even as it is a fixture in the finals. James is still in Cleveland, and on this night, and this series, that proved to be enough. Of all the impressive stretches in his career, what James did in the final 12 minutes of this game ranked near the top. He had 6 points in the first 5 minutes of the quarter, each one in direct response to a Celtics score all three shots he made came within 24 seconds of a Boston basket. It's one of those things that we felt like we had some good momentum going there, and then we had some great looks that just literally went in and out and that we missed. Celtics forward L. Horford said, the Cavaliers, meanwhile, were supposed to have breathed new life into the team back at the trade deadline when they acquired three 25-year-olds Rodney Hood, Jordan Clarkson, and Larry Nance Jr. Those three players combined for two points on one for four shooting in this game, with Hood affixed to the bench for the full 48 minutes. George Hill, the other new Cavalier, was 2-4-6 with 6 points. This group is not the team of the future. The Cavaliers game 7 starters, on average, are 31 years old. 6th man Kyle Korver is 37. Their opponents starting 5. Meanwhile, had an average age of 25.4 years. This is most certainly the team of the recent past, even as it is a fixture in the finals. James is still in Cleveland, and on this night, and this series, that proved to be enough. Of all the impressive stretches in his career, what James did in the final 12 minutes 
minutes of this game ranked near the top. He had six points in the first five minutes of the quarter, each one in direct response to a Celtics score. All three shots he made came within 24 seconds of a Boston basket. 